Welcome to the Five Rivers Podcast. For more information, head to fiveriverschurch.com. We now join our services already in progress. Well, good morning. good morning. Welcome to Five Rivers this morning. I'm so grateful you could join us this morning and, and just celebrate him. Amen. Good morning to those of you at home. Thank you for joining us. You know, it's a 4th of July weekend. We've got a church picnic today. A lot of reason for celebration, for excitement. I tell you what, though, every single day, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Let's all stand up. Let's just praise his name this morning. When the doubt in my way tries to steal what you say, saying I have no reason to praise, I will give thanks as I will give thanks when the roar that I hear is the voice of my fear trying to silence this hope in my heart oh I will give thanks yes I will give thanks the song of thanksgiving is my battle cry Joy as my weapon, I'll stand and defy the lie of the dark with my hands lifted to the sky. Oh, I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will dance in your kindness and claim every yes and amen. Oh, I will rejoice. Nothing can 
nothing may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh, my God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. And I'm going to sing your victory. I'm going to sing your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, I'm going to sing your victory. I'm going to sing your victory. For the battle belongs. giant cause I know how this story ends yes I know how this story ends and I'm gonna sing your victory I'm gonna sing your victory for the battle belongs to you Lord Turn it. 
victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord.
church. We declare it, hallelujah. There is victory in this house today, church. Hallelujah. We declare it. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let's just sing that bridge one more time. Hallelujah. Let's begin to declare it. Get it in your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we declare it. We declare it, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We declare the name, the name of Jesus. Boldly we proclaim, the enemy has to leave. All the Rejoice in the Lord that he's won it all for me. Let's offer some praise up to the Lord Jesus Christ in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Hey, to make the distribution easier, you're welcome to be seated as we continue in worship this morning. And we're going to do just that, continue in a worshipful attitude. Just a little reminder before we do, you do not need to be a member of Five Rivers Church to participate in communion here, but it is important that you've received the gift of salvation that he's offered to you, and uh, we hope that all has done that. But as the ushers distribute the elements this morning, let's continue to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy, holy.
no to sing that song because God sent his son Jesus willingly laid down his life to pay it all for us and as the song before this one stated he has won it all we have this time on a monthly basis here because of that truth he has won it all for us Scripture records that on the evening that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he gave instructions, as often as you eat of this bread, you do so in remembrance for me. It's a representation of his body, as he points out. And then after supper, he took the cup and he says, often, as often as you drink of this cup, what's that? It's a symbol of, of the blood that he shed for us, that our sins could be washed away. You're going to hear in the message in just a few moments uh, of the fact that the price that was paid for us is immeasurable. How do you put a price on the blood and the life of God, of the Son of God? It's immeasurable. But I think the Lord paid an immeasurable price because of the immeasurable value that he places on you. You're the only creation in all of creation that he created in his image. And when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God temporarily lost something that was invaluable to him. It can't be measured. So he paid a price that can't be measured for your soul, for my soul. That's amazing love, isn't it? If you didn't come into this place today or didn't tune in watching today with that in mind, I, I want to encourage you to gather that to the forethought of your mind. You are immeasurably loved by the creator of the universe, your creator, and the one who laid his life down to redeem us. Amen. We hold in our hands today a symbol of the body of Christ. And we're going to do as what Jesus instructed us. As often as you eat of this bread, you do so in remembrance of me. Lord, today we remember that you willingly laid down your life to purchase our salvation with the hope of spending eternity with you. And in our remembrance, we are filled with gratitude and we say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's take together. you shed your blood it's a ransom for many it's a ransom for whoever will receive the gift of your salvation and also in your word Lord you said as often as you drink of this cup you do so in remembrance we do so in remembrance of you today Lord and we're so grateful that our sins can be washed away that we can be redeemed, reconciled back to a God who loves us with an immeasurable love. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take together.
presence is here every week, but there are some weeks we can just feel it even more. And I believe this morning that we can just feel it more this morning. Amen. But we are receptive. It's amazing what his presence can do in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being here today. So great to see everybody. Um, we're all seated, so if you'd like to give a wave around as a greeting, you may do that. If you'd like to get up and shake a hand, you're certainly free to do that as we roll into our morning announcements. Rivers family. Our annual church picnic is today and will be held right after our morning worship service. Everyone is invited to stay, so please stick around for a time of fun, food, and fellowship. Our youth leave for camp tomorrow. Please pray that the Lord would reveal himself in a new and powerful way and that they would have a fun and safe week. There will be no Wednesday night Bible studies this week or next as we prepare for VBS. Next Sunday, we'll kick off our VBS. If you have taken a tag for an item needed for VBS, we need those items brought in as soon as possible. We will be having a time of training for all volunteers on Saturday, July 9th, starting at 9 a.m. It is important for all volunteers to be here for the training. Also, we have flyers for you to hand out to those in your neighborhood and to your family and friends. So please take as many as you need and help us spread the word. In the lobby today, we have two computers set up to pre-register for VBS. So if you're planning on bringing your kids or your grandkids, you can avoid the lines on the first night of VBS and pre-register them today, right after service. All right, Five Rivers, you all have a great week, and I'll see you next Sunday. Oh, clap for announcement, that's pretty good. Good job, Betsy, thank you. Hey, we're glad you're here today. Now listen, I'm gonna get you out before noon, get your mind off the food, all right, there's a ton of food over there, and I know they're going to be firing up the grill here to do burgers and hot dogs here shortly. So uh, anyhow, glad you're here. Hope you uh, stick around. Don't be in a hurry today. Uh, the games and tons of food. We can't leave until it's all gone, right? All right. Hey, how you like my shirt? Yeah? So a phrase that you're familiar with me saying, get into God's Word. And get God's word into you. So Heather Goodyear made this shirt for me. Thank you, Heather. And she gave it to me. Oh, it was a month or so ago. And then in conversation, I agreed that I would wear it on the 4th of July day. So holding up my end of the bargain. Amen. I think that's good advice, though. Uh, and um, so if you need a shirt made, there she is. Hi. Uh, Heather will be glad to make it on her little cricket machine there that she makes all this fancy stuff with that's for sure hey I'm grateful for everyone thank thank you for being here but I want to give a special shout out to all of our tech team uh, our veterans and our newbies so Thursday evening and all day yesterday from 9 until 5 was a or tech training day and I just want to give a special thanks for those that are part of our tech team and you took time out of your Saturday to come out and either learn or have some advanced training. Uh, we are grateful for you. We live in a day where that's a key part of uh, our mission to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out with anyone and everyone by all means and do it with excellence. And we've got a great team. If you're still interested in joining the tech team, 
Uh, you can see me, you can see Brian, uh, see anyone back in the tech booth, we'll, they'll direct you in the, right, in the right direction. Well, let's get down to business, get into the word of the Lord today, because uh, I'm going to try to get you out before the, the grill aroma starts coming in into the sanctuary. In our Church and Culture series, yeah, we're now in Ephesians where we've already started to discover that, and will continue, that Jesus has reconciled all of creation to himself and to God the Father. And secondly, Jesus has united people from all nations to himself and to one another in his church. By the way... Uh, I, um, I gave you a homework assignment last week to read the book of Ephesians this past week. Um, who read it? One, two, three, four. Ah. So for those of you that did not read it, did not do your homework assignment this week, you have to read it twice. All right. So let's see how many times we have to do this Sunday to Sunday. Hopefully nobody will you know, have to get up to where you've got to read it a hundred times uh, in a week. But if you do have to, that'll be good for you. That's for sure. Because remember, you have to get into God's Word and get God's Word into you. Yes. All right, God's Word to us today. We're going to continue in last week's theme, Blessed in Christ. You may remember, and by way of quick recap, we looked into some, some of Paul's expression of praise in Ephesians chapter 1, and for, for all of the blessings that we have in Christ, my goodness, how many would, be, how many would total up out of a, a group just this size? And then we ended with an illustration, once again, thanks to Coleman Mixon for being brave to come up here. We ended with, with an illustration uh, oh, he's back here. I lost him. You moved on me, Coleman. All right. Of, of how God's grace is bestowed upon us, and it calls praise out of us, doesn't it? Amen. Two key verses from last week was Ephesians 1, verse 3, that says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And then verse 6, that says, To the praise of His glorious grace which he has freely given, or some translations say bestowed or, or poured on us in the one he loves. Today we continue looking at God's grace and the blessings we have in Christ. Verse 7, we pick up, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. What are some of your thoughts in regards to the fact that you are redeemed? Yeah, let me just let you in on, on some of mine. Of course, I, because I'm redeemed, I'm now filled with the Holy Spirit. But in addition to that, there's a number that maybe you can identify with. I have a new way of living. I have a new way of living. Don't live like the former old self. How about this one? I am freed from the bondage of sin and self-destruction yeah. because I'm redeemed. Yes. Because I'm redeemed. Listen, I love where before I didn't. Come on, some of you were just perpetual cranky pants before Jesus came into your heart and soul, right? You, you love where before you didn't. Here's a definite result of, of God's redemption. I'm blessed with an amazing family, both in my family and church family, because I'm redeemed. Because I'm redeemed, I now care about the same things that God cares about. That's a blessing of, of redemption. How about this? I love this one. I love God's word, and I gain wisdom from it for life because of his redemption that I've received into my life. 
Here's another good one. Because of the redemption that he's given me. Oh, man, I have a hope and a future. And it's going to be good because of Christ. I love this one. Because I'm redeemed, I now realize who my creator, who my savior, and who my Lord are. Because I'm redeemed, I have a greater power that is in me than all of the powers of the world and in heaven against me. Come on, you've read that scripture. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now this list could go on for quite a while. I'm going to give you just two more because of his redemption. I don't have to spend eternity in hell. And because of his redemption, I get to spend eternity in heaven with my Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I am redeemed. If you are in the house today and you too are redeemed, you should be happy, happy, happy. All right? Because the joy of the Lord comes with that redemption. There's a happiness to be found in it. Paul proceeds to list some of the blessings that flow from the matchless grace of God. These blessings are all in Christ. Come on, everybody say, in Christ. Christ. Absolutely, we see that in verse 7. So these blessings are all in Christ as being not only their source, but also their sphere. The blessings that Christ follower have in Christ can be found nowhere else but in Christ. Christ. This is one of the many benefits of being joint heirs with Jesus as our Redeemer. And these blessings are enjoyed by the the Christ follower in a continuous present. You know, Paul writes in verse 7, we have redemption. So the we have there could actually be written, we have and are still having. This is a blessing and a continuous present. And when he says we have redemption in verse 7, redemption is so much more involved than just buying something for money. All right, it's, it's so much more for that, it, or more than that. It has to do with, with the emancipation or the liberation of slaves or prisoners. And the term that he used here also implies the payment of a ransom price. Okay? So here, that ransom price is being specified. What's it say? We just read it. Through his blood. Our redemption, your salvation, my salvation came at a high price. Came at a very high price. The blood and the life of Jesus Christ. The price paid for man's redemption from bondage to sin was costly beyond measure. As we referenced uh, during our communion time just a few moments ago. But there's a little more here. See, it was the very lifeblood of Christ himself poured out in death. So if you would have read this verse, uh, verse 7 that we just read a few moments ago, originally, and as a Jewish person, as a Hebrew, back in the day, if you would have read that, you would have understood what a Hebrew person understood, and that is blood in the sense of a violent death. A violent death. In other words, a violent death occurred for you to be redeemed. A violent death occurred for me to be redeemed. Jesus is the sacrifice that was laid down to purchase our redemption. And in a sacrificial context, the likeliest meaning here of what Paul is writing about It's not simply life, but there's more to it than that. It is life yielded up in death. So Jesus is the once and for all new covenant fulfillment of the Old Covenant, uh, Old Testament system for atonement. Jesus yielded his life for ours. 
So what does he do here? We know that Christ is the ultimate fulfillment of the, new, of the old covenant, right? So we draw a little here from the old covenant to help us to understand this better. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. For the life of a creature is in the blood. And I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. So what was foreshadowed long ago in the Levitical system of sacrifice was realized at the cross when the Son of God laid down His life in death to ransom us from our sins. According, and then according to verse 7, he talks about forgiveness there, doesn't he? And, and the forgiveness of verse 7, the forgiveness of sins, that's included in the redemption that we have through the blood of Jesus. Now, I love this image, forgiveness. It's, it's loosing someone of what binds them. Isn't that good news? Forgiveness is, is the loosing of someone uh, of what binds them. And actually, this stems from a verb here that means send away. Okay? Send away. So when, when God deals with our sin, it is dispatched into the wilderness like the scapegoat in Leviticus chapter 16, verses 20 through 22. Look here. When Aaron has finished making atonement, for the most holy place, the tent of meeting in the altar, he shall bring forward the live goat. He is to lay both hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the wickedness and rebellion of the Israelites, all their sins, and put them on the goat's head. So if you've ever heard the term scapegoat, this is where it comes from. He shall send the goat away into the wilderness in the care of someone appointed for the task. The goat will carry on itself all their sins to a remote place, and the man shall release it in the wilderness. So this Leviticus passage here, it's a foreshadowing. It's a foreshadowing of when Christ would carry our sins to the cross with him to be done away with. Hallelujah. Wake up. That's good news. You're not going to hear any better news than that today, right? Now, back to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. In this verse, sins here refer to deviations from the right path. So you're on the right path, you deviated from it, right? Now, here's where it gets even better. The term sins here denotes a, a sinful condition and sinful acts, all right? Forgiveness deals with both. Forgiven, amen? The generosity of God is displayed in in the redemption and remission of sins in proportion to the rich abundance of His grace. And that's why verse 8 records it this way, that He has lavished on us. God has lavished His grace on you. God has lavished His grace on me. I love the, the meaning of the word lavish. Isn't that a fun word to say? Yeah. Lavish. Come on, everybody just say Lavish. You know what lavish means? Lavish means to bestow in generous or extravagant quantities. God has bestowed His blessings, His goodness, His grace on you in generous, extravagant quantities. Come on, church. Think of some of God's riches that He has lavished, that He has showered, that He has poured on you. Now, not just now. You may be going through a difficult season right now, so it's hard to feel that. But God isn't just in the now. He's in the always, isn't He? So don't think of this in terms of just now. Think of through your life, even before you came to Christ. 
You can now give testimony of the time that e of the times, even though you weren't aware of it, you didn't recognize it in the time, but God was active in your life, protecting you, providing for you, preparing you for when you would come to your spiritual senses and realize these things. So not just now, but through the course of your life, he has been there. He has blessed you. He was lavishing His goodness upon you all of the days of your life. The riches of God's grace has been showered on us in abundance. God is never stingy in His giving. You should be grateful for that. He always gives generously. And this draws out the, the poured on image that we ended last week's message with. Paul now lists further blessings. God's grace not only brings redemption and forgiveness, but every kind of wisdom and understanding or insight as well. See, wisdom in this verse, wisdom is, is the knowledge which sees into the heart of things and knows them as they really are, okay? Understanding gives us the discernment that we need that leads to right action. Come on, who needs wisdom and understanding in life to give us discernment that's going to lead us into right action? Now, I think action is an important word there. A lot of people know what to do, know better, but still don't do it. That's the whole Romans 7 dilemma, right? Uh, I knew what I should do, but I didn't do it. I knew what I shouldn't have done, but I did it, right? Right? So that one of the gifts that we have here, this understanding, it gives us discernment that will lead us into right action. Come on. In a moment of honesty, I think all of us would have to give an account of the times that we blundered through something or we engaged in wrong actions and then the consequences that came about from that, right? We've all done it. But now... One of the blessings in Christ. It's this wisdom to know right and to do right. It's one of the riches that's afforded us in Christ. Oh, what riches we have in Christ that comes from being redeemed by Christ. We should be grateful. But here's the thing. In Christ is the key. In Christ is the, is the key. His blessings are in Him. We, we should understand that. That's Anyone ever taken a cruise? Okay, you've got to be on the boat in the water for a cruise. Okay, you've never taken a cruise in, in the desert, right? Or on a mountaintop. So you've got to be where... I think we get that, right? So, in other words, to get the blessings of Christ, you've got to be in Christ, okay? To be on a cruise, you've got to be on the boat in the water, for sure. Now, Paul ends verse 8 with all wisdom and understanding, and he goes right into verses 9 and 10. Here they are. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Now, what do you think mystery means here? What do you think mystery means here? You see, what God has revealed and, and, and has to do, it has to do with his own will. So mystery... As you read through Ephesians, you'll find it's a reoccurring theme in Ephesians. We'll see it again in chapter 3, we'll see it again in chapter 4, we'll see it again in chapter 5, and again in chapter 6. But here, as in the rest of the New Testament, it simply means a, a, a truth that was once hidden, but now it's made known to us, okay? Okay? So as Paul also writes in, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 26, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. So the word mystery here, it, it denotes the secret plan of God. 
that will become apparent at the end of the age. But in the New Testament, the unlocking of the mystery has now taken place. How? It's a great question. In Christ. It's all in Christ. So this is another rich blessing to make sure that you place your life. Wow. All right, back to page one. We're starting over. We got to get we got to get this into us, or get into this and get it into us. All right. So I'm going to give you one more chance to see if we got to go back to the beginning of of the message. So another rich blessing. This is another rich blessing. So you need to make sure that you place your life in Christ if you want these blessings that He gives us. Now the word disclose there in verse ten, it indicate or it indicates what has already happened when Jesus came in the flesh. All right? That was the first advent. And all of this in accordance, I love this, with God's good pleasure, which has been set out in Christ. You know, for these people that think that God is like this tyrant in heaven, it was God's good pleasure to provide redemption. It's God's good pleasure to give you His Spirit. It's God's good pleasure to share His wisdom, His understanding, His insight, His discernment, His hope, His promises. Amen? That's God's good pleasure to share with you all of the riches that are in Christ. And He wants to give them to you generously. In sending Christ Jesus... It is evidence that God's good pleasure is to redeem us and to bless us with every good blessing in Christ and all of this making sure that we get to spend eternity with Him. Does that sound like a tyrant to you? God absolutely craves that you receive His gift of redemption so that you get to spend eternity with Him. That is His good pleasure. Look here, next slide. For all eternity, the Father cherished in His own mind a plan that was to be carried out in Christ. This has now been revealed to the church through the writings of the Apostle Paul. As Paul stated in verse 10, we already read it a moment ago, to put in into effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. But what does this verse say to you today? Here's what it means. The basic meaning here relates to household management. A lot of you, if not all of you, manage your households well, right? This, ha- this relates to household management, and it's extended to cover general provision or arrangement, and eventually, it represents the divine government of the universe. So we're seeing an expansion take place in this verse, aren't we? And here, Paul uses it to suggest the administration or putting into effect God's far-reaching redemptive plan. It goes beyond just you and I. God's redemptive plan reaches in to the the outer bounds of the universe. You see, this took place when the Messianic age was inaugurated, when Jesus came. All right, and salvation is is in regard or is regarded as unfolding in a series of times in this passage or season seasons that reach the climax and, and the ultimate at the advent of Christ. Now you may remember from a few months ago back Galatians chapter 4 verse 4, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Now, in regards to a text in the Bible that we read, that we read from, 
or we, we read from other places because the best interpreter of Scripture is Scripture, right? So the Christian era still has to run its course, and not until its, its close will God's eternal purposes come into to full fruition. But then when it does, full universal reconciliation will be achieved. So when Paul writes all things here in Ephesians, it includes the whole creation. Everything in heaven and on earth will be under Christ because all of the blessings are entrusted in Christ. Now you may remember way back when we were in Corinthians in our church and culture series from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 24 through 28, then the end will come. When he hands over the kingdom to God the Father. So this is when it all comes to a close. Jesus will hand over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been under or been put under him, it is clear that does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him, who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. So back in Ephesians, when Paul writes to bring together from our text, it means to sum up together again. You see, at the end of the age, everything will be seen to add up to Christ. The recognition of His preeminence will ensure that the original harmony of the universe will be restored. So the mission of Jesus Christ, it extends way beyond the human race. Really, we're looking into some powerful stuff here today. The mission of Christ extends beyond the human race and assumes cosmic dimensions, heavenly dimensions. You see, the central theme of our passage today is that God has affected even the heavenly realms and this heavenly or this cosmic reconciliation in Christ. The work of Jesus on the cross, it's the central axis for the history of creation, whether on earth or in heaven, since he has redeemed his people. Now, here's where we get into the heavenly realms. Not only has he redeemed his people, but he has silenced all hostile heavenly powers. Thanks be to God for that. Look here, we'll be here in a few weeks. Ephesians 3.10, his intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. And then in a couple of months, we'll be in chapter 6, verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So being in Christ not only redeems you from your sins and brings forgiveness, but also there's a protection from our enemy that would cause us to sin and our enemy who would destroy us. There's a power against that now. Listen, being in Christ is an amazing gift of rich blessings for us. Now, here's what we've all learned at some point. You, you cannot fend off these spiritual forces in the heavenly realms in your own power. In your flesh, you don't have the, the power or the authority to fight off spiritual forces of evil. They're powerful. That's why you and I need to be in Christ 
to experience this. And here's where we get a little bit of a glimpse. This power in Christ goes beyond just earth and human redemption. It extends to fight off and to disarm and even to destroy the spiritual forces of wickedness that would want to destroy us. Next slide. This is good news. Christ has defeated the powers of this dark world and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So you definitely want to be in Christ. There's a cosmic power in his, his redemption, isn't there? Brian, you're welcome to come on back up at this point. I want to pray for us today. You know, I wonder if there's some here in this place or some who are viewing the the stream today. You need to be redeemed. And you need to recognize you need to be redeemed. If you've not accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, into your life, to be your personal Savior. Some need to be redeemed. But I wonder, I wonder if there's anyone here. I wonder if there's anyone watching. You need to remember what it's like to be and live redeemed. You know, I th there's a reason that we do communion at least once a month on a monthly basis. And there's a reason that Jesus said, as often as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you do so in remembrance of me. Because our memory leaks, doesn't it? What God did 10 years ago in your life isn't always on the forefront of your mind. What God might have done yesterday for you, today's turmoil, today's troubles, may have, may have caused you to forget. And I just wonder if there's anyone today that you have forgotten what redemption and the blessings of being redeemed mean to you. And to live in the power and blessings of Christ. Do you remember, O oh, thou redeemed? Little King James Version on you there. Come on, if you've been redeemed, just put a hand up. Are you living like it? Are you remembering his redemption? And what a blessing that is. So today is, is your soul in Christ? Is your remembrance in Christ? Is your heart today in Christ? Is your mind in Christ? Are your thoughts in Christ? Is your faith this morning in Christ? Is your hope? in Christ or have you lost a little bit because of what's going on in the world around us how about this is your trust in Christ because God's not doing things in the timing that you would like for him to do them so we forget who our trust is in if we're not careful is your trust in Christ are your desires in Christ is your will in Christ Christ is your life in Christ let's just sum it up and put it all in there is your all in Christ is your all in Christ we do have a tendency to forget and to drift don't we you ever notice that you don't drift into your purpose right? You, you ever notice that you don't just drift into disciplines? No, that takes intentionality, doesn't it? It takes some strategic disciplines. You, you don't, you're not going to just drift into all of the rich blessings that are in Christ. We need to reciprocate His intentionality. 
Jesus was pretty intentional, wasn't he? God was, was, was very intentional. I'm going to send my son. Jesus said, okay, Lord, I'm going to obey. I'm going to lay down my life. He, so redemption, you know, nobody just drifted into redemption. It was on purpose. It was, it was determined with a holy commitment. And because of that, our driftings usually take us away. You know, we tomorrow's the 4th of July, and we celebrate the freedoms of our country. You look back at the sacrifices that it took to earn our freedoms. You don't drift toward freedom. It comes at a price, doesn't it? We see some driftings today. But I want to encourage us today, don't let your heart drift. Don't let your spirit drift. Be intentional about being in Christ. Would you stand with me in the house of the Lord today? And I just want to challenge you. Is all that you are, is, is all that makes you up as an individual, is it in Christ today? Your soul, your heart, your mind, your hope, your faith, your trust, your will, your desires maybe you need to answer this question what do you need to make sure today is in Christ maybe you need to take that first step in Christ and receive his salvation or maybe you've drifted let's bow our heads and close our eyes sometimes we ask for a show of hands but you know just do business between you and the Lord today the altars are always open. If you need to come down here and pray through something, I want to encourage you to do that. But let's just take a moment as Brian sings and plays something to make sure that all of who we are is in Christ. That's where the rich blessings of Jesus is found. His redemption, His forgiveness, His wisdom, all of His blessings. He's jealous of them, so he, he keeps them in Christ. Amen? Amen. Brian, play and sing something for us, and let every individual in this place just have a moment or two or a few moments to make sure that everything about us is placed in Christ. that's in this place and watching online today. I pray that you will lavish your blessings on every individual, on every family. 
I pray that everyone in the name of Jesus would be in Christ. And that every individual in this place or watching would have a great sense of knowing that they are your good pleasure. Pray for the fullness of your redemption, your grace, your forgiveness, your wisdom, all of the blessings in Christ. And that as we leave this place to know, or today, that we would all know that your power is greater than just our humanity and on this earth, but it reaches to, to fight against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly realms. And that in you, we can live in freedom and protected and provided for by you. And that that is your good pleasure. Hallelujah. God, we are a blessed people today. You have lavished your goodness on us and we are grateful. I pray for everyone. You'll bless them, Lord. Cause your face to shine upon us. And that we would go from this place today and through this week and the days ahead just knowing that you are lavishing your goodness, we, that we're walking in your redemption, we're living our lives in Christ and all of the blessings that that brings, in Jesus' name Amen Amen You walk the stage, sing, pray I don't know when the burgers and the hot dogs and the stuff will be ready, but we'll eat when it's ready Blessings on you today Don't be in a hurry we're going to continue to sing, but hang out. There's games, there's food, there's fun, there's fellowship. Let's have a blast in the blessings of the Lord. Amazing. If you've never visited us at Five Rivers, we want to invite you to this week's services with ministry for the entire family. For location information, visit us online at fiveriverschurch.com.